person. Same. And I think I speak for all of us here when I say the way you've handled this, this week, physical questions has been admirable. admirable so. no, thank you very much. So a couple more try today, to continue. <laughs> First of all, how, how are the players? Because you've said already they can't be living in a bubble. They know. No, they know. But we had a briefing. We had a briefing here uh, after the game, day after the match, uh, from from Petter, who gave everybody here in the building, not only the players, uh, a quick brief and uh, said that and, and explained the situation. Not too much what we did not already know. So we have to live in in, in this um, situation. Um, it does not make sense to worry too much because. We don't have a lot of influence, not to say no influence at all. So um, that was the bottom line. We are allowed to focus on football and do the best to focus on football. Like I said, it was not only the team, it was the, the, the complete staff. And this is what we try to do anyway, to create an atmosphere where you feel safe once you enter the building, where you feel calm. And because we do this on a daily basis, this can help now to deal with the situation. Um, of course, there is uncertainty, and of course, there will be like, like with all humans here, like uh, almost a hundred people in the building, eighty people in the building. Everybody will feel different about this. Some will feel scared. Some will feel excited. Some will feel I don't know sad. Uh, and and I think everything is allowed for every individual. But uh, we can allow ourselves, and we should allow ourselves to to. To, to focus on what we love the most, on, and this is football, and, and to, to, to perform the best way possible. What makes me very positive is that we did twice in these circumstances, um, um, against Liverpool and against uh, Luton Town. Very focused performances, um, very good performances. The, the organization was, was like always spot on, and this makes me very positive that we are able to, to, to compete tomorrow because it's also what we demand of ourselves. And this chain of communication which you've spoken so warmly about, Petter and then Marina, yeah. is that still going on? And how will you feel about the fact that Marina probably won't <coughs> be here? Yes, she, yeah, okay, let's, I, I, will not, I will not comment on any speculation about that, but uh, my communication with Petter and Marina was, was excellent from day one. Uh, Marina is ill at the moment, so otherwise she would have been here. There's no doubt that she would have briefed uh, everybody. So I hope we can, uh, keep, yeah, it will. there's right now no doubt that this will continue for the next days, weeks, months, I don't know w what time, and then I hope uh, it stays on the same level, hopefully with the same person. If not, okay, we, we, we need to adapt. It seems that we have to adapt on a daily basis to, to new situations. You signed up to work with the people you're working with now. Yeah. What about you going forward? Would you have any problems staying here? No, I have the, the opposite of a problem staying here. I said many times that I, I love working in Premier League. I would love to be in England and and feel the, the, the tradition and the love for, for sports in general and for football in, 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 in particular. It's an amazing place to be. Chelsea is, uh, is, is uh, from for my point of view, for me, a perfect fit. I, I love to be here. I love everything about the club. And um, hopefully it, it, it continues. There is now uh, an uncertainty, but, but isn't it always as a, as a football manager? So I, I, I'm, I'm used and trained to live with it on, uh, on, on of course, different levels. And this is uh, quite a level, I have to, I have to be honest. But, but I'm, I'm positive and uh, hope things uh, will, will end uh, well. We're in March. The, the the days are getting longer, the nights are getting shorter, the weather's getting a bit better, yeah. believe it or not. Summer on the mind. You will have obviously had targets and spending plans in place for the transfer window. That's the way the club operates. Is that now all on hold? Yeah, but uh, actually, to be very honest, there are no talks at the moment for, for summer. We're not going on, not, not with Marina, not with Petter. It's simply a bit too early. There are always like ideas and, and reflections on, on the subject. But the, the main focus was in the last weeks, even without all the noise uh, on, on the different competitions, to be as, as successful as we, can, as we can only be and, and to, to bring out the best in our team, where we had some, some work to do and still have some work to do to, to constantly improve. 
but we're in a in a in a good place at the moment. I feel the the team again growing and and um, um, getting better and better, and uh, yeah. So no worries in this particular case until summer. It's still a long way to go. Thank you. Hi, Charlie Pelkey. Hi, Thomas. Hi. Uh, what's the state of your squad going into the match tomorrow? Have you got any fresh injuries or how to get into the players? Uh, no fresh injuries. Um, I still have to talk to the to the to the fitness coaches and the doctors uh, after press conference. I think Aspi was not in training yesterday, so this will be a bit uh, this will be a bit too close, unfortunately for him. Hakim was in training, seemed seemed good, so hopefully he can come back and um, uh, Reese James did training yesterday, so no no problems so far, no reactions after after his two matches. It's it's good, and uh, uh, the guys who were not who were not with us in in Luton Town because of minor injuries like like Trevor, like um, like Thiago, um, were back in training yesterday and seemed fine and good to go. And you said early on in the season that you wanted to see your full potential from Ruben Loftus Cheek, who of course you purchased against Luton. Yeah. Um, do you envision him fulfilling that potential, perhaps in a defensive role, moving forward? Well, it would not be the first time where like a situation like this uh, um, is the, the foundation for, 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 for somebody finding a new position in a squad. He did, he did very well, I think, still, I think, in the, in the middle of the back three. Um, after a bit of a shy start, he, was, he, he grew into the match and, and, and uh, found his... his, his uh, his top performance on, on this day, which, which helped us a lot. Still, I think that when he did it in the last 20, 25 minutes on the, on the single number six position, I think this is his best position to, to have the most influence because then he can, can impose his, his dribblings, his driving with the ball and his physicality a bit higher up the pitch, but he did well. We were very, very uh, open before the match. We told everybody that we will have players on, on, on maybe on some positions that they do not prefer, like also like Callum as a wing back and, and like Ruben, but we need them and we need them right now. It's, it's the moment to step up and not to be angry or too disappointed about like the last weeks. This was the moment to, to show true team spirit and, and um, give the very best on maybe an unfamiliar position and, and they did and that's why I was, was very happy about the way we won the game and how we played the game. I did not over expect in performance wise and like a, a fancy game but what we did was, was very very good from, from, from the mental aspect and it showed true character and that's why I'm, I'm very happy about it. George. Hi, hi. Hello, Thomas. Um, this is such big news. Are you sort of concerned it could derail your season in a way, in the way it can affect the players? It it can affect. We sh we should not say this has no effect. It can affect, but I think we should we should be careful of, of like already giving uh, um, an outlook on a general effect because I think like we have 80 people in the building and very very 80 different life situations, 80 different uh, characters and they will handle the situation differently. And I think that we have the, also the chance here in, in, in Cobham to, to give everybody the freedom to first of all like um, react to the situation how, how he wants and how it's good for him to speak about it, to not speak about it, to be open, to not be open, to just go on. And in the end still influence everybody uh, in, a, in a positive way that it's okay to focus on sport and we proved it already twice in the last two games, so right now there are not too many reasons why we should not be able to do it a, a, a third time and then a fourth time and then a fifth time. Let's see what, what's going to happen, how the situation evolves and, and continues, but, but right now I'm, I'm, I'm positive that we can be competitive tomorrow. It has got big ramifications going forward, though. I mean, if you if you look at you've got a lot of players out of contract, you know, does that make them more likely to leave? How how are they feeling this week? Do certain big players out of contract because yeah. they don't know what the future is for Chelsea. Yeah, of course, that's a situation, and maybe the bottom line is we cannot help, we cannot help it. It it's it's what it is, and. Um, you never know, maybe it has a positive effect on, 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 on the negotiation, maybe it has a negative effect. We, 
we cannot predict and we I, I, I would I would like not to predict and not to start in predicting all scenarios because it, it, we, we just lose focus on it but of course like I said everybody has a different uh, situation feels different about it still I hope for the best outcome still I think we have um, something to offer still I think Chelsea is a strong club and will stay a strong club I mean, the, the, our owner decided to sell the club, but he, he sells a strong, solid and uh, a very well organized club on, on the highest level. And whoever buys the club, then do you agree that they'll probably never be as successful as Roma Abramovich of what he's We achieved? will see. We will see. Let's see. Let's speak in the next 20 years and then, and then we see. Whoever buys it is, uh, is, is lucky to have it. James Savindra, Talk to Sport. Thomas, how would you sum up what Chelsea have achieved since Roman Romic took over the club? It's exceptional. I mean, it's, it speaks for itself. And uh, he, is, uh, he was and he is a very, very passionate owner uh, who, who cares actually about, about the team, about the club, about the performance, which is, like personally, which is very rare and makes it very special. What information and assurances was Petr Cech able to, to give the players and the staff in the briefing you had? No insurances, no insurances, but uh, because how could he, how could anybody? We don't, we, we cannot predict the future, nobody can, uh, but uh, maybe it was just more the, um, the, the, the bottom line that, that we can allow ourselves uh, to, to, to keep on going and, and to do what we did over the last days to focus on sports and uh, we are employees and we are in, a, in right now still very privileged and um, that was more or less the message. And finally for me, your first Premier League game in, in two weeks, what do you still think is yeah. possible for the, for the club this season? Actually, actually, I had to like, uh, it, it took me some minutes to, to, to um, to find the answers to the last two, three Premier League matches. It's, it's a very weird situation. I, I think we played two or three matches in the last six, seven weeks in, in Premier League. So normally you have a feeling for, for, for the competition and you have a feeling from where, where are we and we are on a good run. So now we are on a good run of results, but you don't see it on the, on the table because we never got three points because it was World Cup and, and, and Carabao Cup and then, then FA Cup. So. Uh, a bit strange, but uh, but still we are in a in a in a in a good place in the table, and we have to we have to fight hard to 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 stay where we are and 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 to give our very best. There's a tough game coming at at Burnley. We think we know very well what's coming, and uh, there will need, there will be no presence for us uh, there. And we 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 want to dig in and accept the fight. Thanks, Thomas. Okay, now on to Zoom to end the broadcast section. Two left for Jerry and Nick to finish. Jerry. Morning, Thomas. Hello. Um, against Burnley at home, you, you struggled to break them down when they scored that, that goal on the break. Do you expect a similar game when they're at home? And, and is this the start of English football that you, you enjoy the variation? And they're, they're obviously very different to a test to, to playing someone like Liverpool or Manchester City, aren't they? Yeah, very different and uh, fair enough because every every team has its style and they have uh, huge success throughout the years. They're very consistent in what they are doing and, and how they are like uh, approaching their games. It's very physical. It's very direct. It's um, very direct up front. Uh, a lot of crosses, very dangerous in set pieces. That's so. That's why we think we know what's coming, and still we hold ourselves back and don't allow ourselves too much to predict because who knows uh, exactly what's coming we have to find in the end it's to enable the players to find answers on the pitch and not today in the meeting uh, to prepare every uh, yes to prepare but but uh, in the end they need to find the solutions and and need to be well prepared in a in a in a very wide range of, of opportunities um, i think we played a very good match we had a look into it um, um, uh, how we did it and, and how we created chances and, and we created a lot. We struggled to, 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 to score the second and third goal to decide the match and were punished in the end with a, very, with a very typical Burnley goal that we could not defend. So yeah, that was more or less the story. Performance-wise, I was very happy. Result-wise, we were looking for a better outcome tomorrow. Okay, last question in the broadcast, Nick Jewell. Hi, Tom Thomas. Um, you said, obviously, that you know, some of the guys had to 
dig in and, and, and you know, um, perform yeah. for the team in difficult circumstances at Luton. Um, so whenever you pick your eleven for um, you know the, the the Burnley game, can you kind of say to them, look, the guys who had to play out of position and had to do difficult things at Luton, now you know you've almost got to repay them a little bit with uh, you know with with with, it, with what will obviously be a difficult game for the reasons you said, and uh, and can you just uh, and also just on on Mr. Bram, Roman Bramovich, um, how proud will you be as a group that you've completed the set of trophies for Chelsea Football Club? So that he, you know, in his tenure, he has. Yeah, we're very happy. We're very happy that we could give him this and 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 win it for him. Is uh, it uh, at least we we close this this cycle uh, for him and for his effort and his uh, uh, passion and and commitment to the club. So yeah, was was uh, was good timing in, um, on on uh, on on this matter. And well, the other one I will, I, I don't know yet, but I don't think I will have this speech exactly because I don't think that we owe each other. I think what, what we do is like that, that, like when you feel us, like uh, what's maybe more, more possible for me than for you, when you feel us on the bench and you feel the guys who played a lot before and play, and, and you could so easily come into the thinking that the game against Liverpool was more important than the game against Luton Town. It's so easy to go down this road uh, in your mindset. But then you feel like like um, players at home who, who text you, hey, have a good match, and, 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 you, and you feel that they are in touch and they're watching and even before the match they're committed. You feel the guys on the bench who are not like sitting on the bench and say like, yeah, let's see if they can do it because I played. No, they're like involved and they're fighting and they're helping and they're coaching. And this is what it takes. So they will feel it very genuinely that they owe each other, because this is a team sport, and 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 still they are also doing it for themselves. So there is also this this uh, to, to hold the balance between doing it for the team, but what is in there for me, and we should not be shy about it. They want to have something as well, and when they deliver like this, they fight for their place, and they fight for their place and their right. To, to play the next match in Burnley because we could rely on them and this is what they do and, and this is what they deserve and and still we want everybody to fight together even like if they are like concurrents or if they maybe struggle in the moment to have the minutes they wish for but uh, we are in a good place we got the spirit back we got the quality back we have um, we have the um, the attitude right in the in the last matches and it's uh, we have we have players back from injury so this is good this is how it how it needs to be to 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 uh, yeah to 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 reach our level of what we demand of ourselves.